uh, his video blog on uh, learning how to game program. I already have some history with game programming, so this isn't like some beginner stuff, and it's definitely not pro. I can tell you that. Um, so what I have going here is uh, what you see here on the editor is not what you see in the game. Uh, what I'm making is uh, if you're familiar with a uh, like the first wizardry game or maybe even eye of the beholder I'm kind of doing something like that where you have like a pseudo first person thing what happens here is that I have this uh this like player sprite right oh let's move it back to where it was this player sprite right here and uh it's angle changes when you turn and depending on the angle it checks like in a cone where all these tiles are and then it uses the position of those tiles to draw the pseudo 3d onto the screen and I'll Press play and show it to you once it compiles. Once it compiles, here we are. See, so it's got like this whole like 80s vector graphics style. It's not vector graphics, it's PNGs, but so it just reads all the tiles and you can like move through the whole area. As you move, the player sprite moves through the tiles and it's just translating those tiles into this pseudo 3d view right so that's what I've got uh, I can also open this like little menu here I can scroll through it and it just scrolls through like that and that's something that I've been trying to work on for a long time and it's the first time I've ever got a scrolling inventory working and I can change the pages the other pages don't function yet and I can use the items, but there's a bit of a bug that I'm trying to work through where, like, you'll see the description for the items, it says displays text. And if you watch at the little bottom box there where it has the party, you'll see the text flash there for, like, a frame. Like, you see that? So I'm trying to fix that up. Now once you go in, the item is gone, but the way that it's programmed, it, uh... Yeah, see, you got, like, that... It, it doesn't scroll properly, so I'll have to get through that problem, too. Uh... That's pretty much what I've got so far. I have this uh, cursor that I'm gonna add mouse control into it, but for now it's just a cursor that follows around your mouse on the screen. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I've got going on there, and I'll show you. Uh, let's put some tiles down. Um, uh, 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 tile layer, there we go. So I got my whole little tile set up here. I can just I can make a little square room like that put a door in the northwest corner and make like a little closet room and then can take the layer down there and just drop them off into that spot and then when we compile that and run it you'll see that we're in the little square room see And it, all it is doing is translating the position of the tiles. Uh, yes, that is an archaic way of programming this kind of thing. That's like more thinking around the early 90s and the 80s kind of programming for games. But that's the way I learn. I'm sure uh, there's a lot of people who can relate with this, but when I learn, I don't want to just learn how, but I also want to learn why. So like when I'm learning to program games, I'm just going to go through the history of programming and see what... Uh, people in the old your of programming how they had to suffer with things and why the advancements were made and then i fully understand and it sticks with me more that way uh obviously i'm not going like full archaic i'm not using assembly or anything like that this is a uh, game maker 2 which uses javascript and i know there's better game engines out there but right now game maker 2 is fine for me because i'm just focusing on 2d design for the longest time i was stuck on rpg maker for like eight years and i did like my ambitions were getting too much for that engine so i was like i gotta move on and i'm on game maker 2 and i think i've been using this for about a year and a half uh my goals for this is to get a combat system going as well uh but before i do that i'm gonna have to have like a party member arrays and things like that getting all the stats going and I've never done a uh, turn-based combat system before, so that'll be fun. See if I can figure out what's there. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for checking in on this. I'll talk to you in the next video.